Hey guys, it's me. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chloe. You can just go like looking at all the videos in my channel to figure out who I am, but pretty much I'm an eating disorder recovery coach. Talk about all things eating disorder related here on this page. So if that's uh, you, if you're struggling with um, exercise addiction, amenorrhea, um, exercise bulimia, orthorexia, anorexia, all of that good stuff, the restrict binge cycle, all of that, then you're in the right place. So um, today I'm answering one of your guys' questions that you left on um, one of the posts on my Instagram. And this girl asked, um, is it okay in recovery to walk 10 to 15,000 steps a day? So I really want to talk about this because we hear all the time in recovery that it's so beneficial to walk and we need to stop doing intensive exercise and we need to walk instead. And I completely agree. I gave up intensive exercise for many months and I only walked. Um, but I want to answer this question and I responded in the comment section because I thought it was really important to talk about this. There's a lot of things here. Um, Basically, the answer I gave her was one, um, the very fact that you are trying to get or like reach a minimum of like 10 to 15,000 steps a day, that is a very like eating disorder mindset. If it's stuck to that, that routine, to that rigidity, to that number, um, and so one, I think just the very fact that you're asking, is it okay to walk 10 to 15,000 steps a day? is just like a very disordered way to say like, is it okay to walk? So obviously there's still a lot of like counting or measuring and um, all of that going on here. And while sure, great, you're not doing an intensive like hit workout, um, we got to understand that it's so important to neurally rewire and still being obsessive about how much you're moving, even if it only is walking, is just another obsession. And it's not allowing your brain to fully just let go of this like desire and compulsion to move. Um, so that's my first thing that I had to say is really like, okay, walk, that's great, but don't be obsessive about it. Don't do it every day. Don't be the walker that's going up like these huge, um, these huge hills. One of my clients said that it was really funny. Um, we were talking about w lowering her training and walking instead and she was like oh that's great because you know I get to walk my dog and after a while I began to notice I'm like okay I think your like dog walks are like a little bit too intense here like you shouldn't be coming home like or the dog you know when you come home shouldn't be completely exhausted after your little walks and so I had to tell her I was like stop being like the world's best dog walker <laughs> like like just walk the dog around the block and like come back like don't be going up these crazy hills and making your dog so ridiculously tired like if your dog's tired then you most definitely are still doing way too much so basically what i want to just say here is walking is great um don't be obsessive about it I honestly say don't go more than an hour. I'm sorry, you don't need more than an hour. Like an hour is a long amount of time already to be walking. Um, so try and do maybe like 20, 30 minutes in the morning, 20, 30 minutes at night. Um, so you can even like break it up a little bit or you can just do like 45 minutes of a nice leisurely stroll um, through the woods or on the beach or whatever, even just in your neighborhood. Um, and don't be... Don't be at like a super ridiculously high pace. Don't practically be jogging when you're supposed to be walking. Like literally just allow yourself to walk. Smell the roses. Like I used to never smell the roses because I thought that like I had to keep on going. I'm not even kidding here. I'd be like, oh, that flower looks nice. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Because I felt like me stopping for 0.2 seconds to smell a rose would have been like a waste of time or it would have not been enough of a workout if I stopped for a second. Absolutely ridiculous, I know. I really recommend people to let go of the numbers. I'm such a non-number person. I absolutely hate it. Maybe it's because I was traumatized by it because I used to be such a number person. It would be like I had to eat right at 12. Couldn't eat at 11.58. Had to be 12. Um, my snack had to be at 3. Could not be 3.05. It could not be um, 2.58. Like, oh my gosh. Um, I loved numbers and it really fueled my eating disorder. So, when I coach people through recovery, I'm all about helping them get away from the numbers. Start looking at things differently. Um, I really like to share about this sort of like the masculine and the feminine way of viewing things. Um, masculine's very 
rigid, um, it's schedule, it's goal oriented, it's numbers, it's mathematical. The masculine energy is the one that goes like, I'm going to hop on the freeway to get to work as fast as I can. Now the feminine energy is all about feeling, it's about emotion, it's about taking the scenic route to work even though it's 10 minutes longer but it's pretty so why not? Like it's all about intuition, it just goes about things in a different way. So I tell people to adopt less of a masculine minded view of exercise which tends to be the like the gym goer, the crossfit, the like I'm lifting this much weight for this much time and doing this much rep and I really invite them to start practicing the feminine way of moving which is more the dancing the walking the doing what feels good in your body the stretching the yoga like that all tends to be more feminine energy so I just yeah. want to say one thing to clarify something um, every single human being has both masculine and feminine energy in them regardless of your sexual orientation or any of that um, so I have masculine and feminine energy so I'm literally just talking right now about um, understanding these two different energy types or like the feminine and masculine archetype um, and understanding that you may be way too much in the masculine because most of the people that I've seen with eating disorders tend to be way more in that masculine energy um, like all the time um, with everything they do. They're really hard workers. They're really just like push through it and all that. Um, and I think that learning to embrace the feminine energy and to slow down and to focus on nourishment and receiving and um, all of that is really important. Again, regardless of your sexual orientation or sexual preferences, um, I think that this is just an important energy to focus on cultivating because it can help us relax all of these rigid rules that the eating disorder has set up. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> long answer to that one question of should I walk 10 to 15,000 steps a day? Um, honey, I don't think you should be controlling that. I think you should just allow yourself to rest, walk when you want to walk. Don't worry about hitting a number every single day. And also, last thing I want to say, um, <laughs> so another thing, yes, I think that that is way too much, actually. I think 15,000 steps is huge for when you're in recovery and you're trying to get your period back. Like, that's a lot of walking and that walking can be something that prevents you from getting your period back. It can prevent you from rewiring this desire to always be moving and to earn your food. Um, so I would recommend scaling that back and walking just a moderate amount. Um, so I hope that that was really helpful. If you have any other questions, please just put them in the comment box down below. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching to help, um, move you through this process and to stay committed to the recovery process, you can definitely send me an email at contact.flowwithclo at gmail.com. I help people take small sustainable steps every single day towards full recovery. I work with therapists, I work with dietitians, I work with um, any other medical professionals who may be overlooking your journey and we work on really um, getting you to where you want to go, which is this place of full recovery, which I just want to say, because I don't think I say this enough on my channel, is 100% absolutely fully possible. Um, you can be fully recovered. I don't have any remnants of my eating disorder left. It doesn't, it doesn't affect my life in any way, shape, or form. Um, so if I can do it, you can, I promise you. So with that said, I hope that you guys have a beautiful day. Find some time to eat some good food and to rest your body because trust me, it really needs it and it really does help in the recovery process. Okay, bye.